Well, here we are. With all eight investigators defeated, it's finally time to move on to Gates Lab, one of the most infamous Fortress levels in Mega Man history. All three Gate stages have a very high level of infamy, but this first one probably stopped a lot of players, because uh, if you got here through going through the teleporters and defeating Hymax, then you would probably not have all of the weapons and items in the game, which means you would be stopped by the very first obstacle in this stage. Also, the music is a remix of Agile Stage from X2. I don't know if they were going for a theme or anything with that choice of music, but it is a very good remix, so I'll accept it for now. So, there's not a lot going on in the middle of the stage, only at the beginning and end, so I'll talk mainly about this first obstacle. This is an infamous spiked wall that I think the patch reduced the height of, so there's not as many spikes here. The only way to pass this, well there are a couple of ways to pass this, but the method that I'm using involves the Falcon Armor and the Ice Burst, which is why I had to take off the Ultimate Buster part. Uh, I have to use the Uncharged Ice Burst, and with the Ultimate Buster equipped, it will force you into the Charged version. And even then, I don't have a lot of ammo, so if I run out of ammo from making too many mistakes, I would have to lose a life and start all over. In the vanilla version of the game, the best way to pass that obstacle was to assemble an entirely different set of armor, the Shadow Armor, which is immune to spikes and completely overpowered in its own right, so getting it is not a bad idea at all. But to get the Shadow Armor, you uh, probably have to assemble the Blade Armor as well, I don't remember for sure, but the Blade Armor and Zero can also get you through it with their enhanced mobility options. It goes without saying that such an obstacle is an incredible annoyance. Even if you are trying to stop players from just skipping to the end game by requiring certain weapons and items to be collected in order to do so, why would you even have the option to skip to the end game in the first place if that's going to be the case? Anyways, this section that I'm in is nothing but enemy spam and laser spam. You can just get through it by uh, just damage tanking, I guess. And then in this area, you're going to be introduced to lava. Now this pit of lava here is very easy to avoid, just dash to the other side of the room. But of course, in the next couple of rooms, there are going to be more lava pits. And these honestly aren't difficult at all, they're basically just auto-scrollers. For this lava pit, you just have to wait for it to hit the top and then start following it as it lowers back down to the bottom and then get through the door very quickly and you're good. And the one after that is pretty much an auto-scroller. You can actually cut off a few seconds by jumping up to the door ahead of time. And there is going to be ice here and spikes. It's all just intimidation. These really aren't threatening at all as long as you keep dashing and jumping. Coming up is a real nightmare of a boss, so I should get started talking about her. I say her because she's called the Nightmare Mother, so I guess it's a her. The Nightmare Mother, oh boy is that ever the appropriate name. On normal mode, she's basically reasonable to deal with, at least for the first half, but on extreme mode, she starts by moving at the exact speed she would have moved at during her desperation phase in normal mode. And her speed on extreme mode is so fast that without certain power parts that enhance your mobility, I don't think there's any way to avoid getting hit at least a couple of times. Maybe if you were like... Uh, a tool-assisted speedrunner or something. You can input TAS movements on console. I don't know. <laughs> something like that anyways. So yes, as you'll see, I guess this enemy is meant to be the spawn of all the nightmares, but that doesn't really come into play in the story or anything. There's no lore behind it. So yes, you can see that she moves very, very quickly, and there's two of her. Her weakness is the Metal Anchor. You'll see that the Charge version summons a bunch of Metal Storm Eagles to attack. I desperately need this in order to actually win here. However, as you will notice, this is one of the only special weapons that can actually be interrupted in its charged form. You can still get hit, and that will stop your attack completely, which is really, really awful and annoying. I have no idea why they picked this one to be the attack that gets interrupted. I guess because it's a really strong charged attack and they wanted to balance it out, but jeez. Anyways, the fight went by really quickly, so I'll briefly explain how she works. When she stops moving, each eye will select one randomly chosen attack to perform. And all of these attacks are completely random, so it's RNG whether you'll be able to avoid them or not, because on extreme mode, they can create some very, very difficult to avoid attacks. When they combine in such weird ways, it's difficult to explain without observing each possible combination. But trust me, uh, sometimes she will set the floor on fire, which reduces your options for evasion even more, 
and at low health, one of the two blocks will start moving up and down in addition to whatever the other one is doing. It's crazy, and I hate it so much. <laughs> now that we're past that, however, we get to enter an even more annoying and awful nightmare of a stage. How nice. This first section is not that annoying, actually. It's just these randomly spawning rocks that you have to worry about while actually going through a rope section with a bunch of spikes everywhere. And then we get into the first of two sections that spam enemies and rocks to no end. Like, there are so many nightmares here. There's even a little corridor with a bunch of nightmares and a full health recovery item at the end. Which I'm going to show because look at how many there are on extreme mode. I'm going to try to use the Giga Attack to get rid of them, but it was very, very ineffective. There are much better Giga Attacks from the other armors. Still, I guess this is a very interesting place to farm Nightmare Souls if you want, because as I've mentioned, the patch uh, makes it so that those enemies always drop souls, no matter how many times you destroy them after they respawn. I'm not even sure what I can say about this upcoming section. It's got a bunch of nightmares, and it's just more enemy spam, and a bunch of the totem pulls from Ground Scaravich's stage, which means on extreme mode, the flying heads will all come at you at the same time. And uh, there are certain points where you can eliminate a totem pole without much effort. By using the charged ray arrow, I can destroy the totem pole above me without even scrolling it onto the screen. I guess the game loads everything above and below me, but not to my left or my right. If you've got the blade armor, then it's actually a very simple task to cut off a large portion of the stage by just dashing upwards into these platforms that are floating in the air. If you've got the shadow armor, this is even easier because you can avoid any spike-related problems. However, there is a huge caveat to using the shadow armor, which will become apparent in Gate Stage 3. But I'll save that for later. For now, we have the most annoying totem pole of all. You've got to deal with this one while riding on a platform that moves up and down and can crush you in the ceiling and send you back to the floor where you will have to do all of the platforming over again and I'm pretty sure the nightmares respawn. So naturally, I just decided to destroy the lower parts of the totem pole and then use this area where you are apparently safe from the spikes and use that to destroy the rest of the totem pole. There are also upcoming totem poles that can be easily destroyed if you use the charged metal anchor to hit them from off screen. Of course, you have to actually scroll the upper parts of the totem pole on screen first. Yeah, that's how it's done. The charged metal anchor is honestly one of the most powerful charged special attacks in the game. You can use it on this totem pole as well. Very easily, I might add. And, of course, if you've got the blade armor or shadow armor, cutting off a portion of the stage by jumping upwards onto the floating platforms is also an option. Coming up for falcon armor players, however, is one of the most annoying things ever. Well, this is also annoying. Notice that the charged ground dash seems to not be able to hit the enemies at all if I rapid fire it. But if I space out my shots, everything's fine? What's up with that? Oh well. And now we have one of the most annoying jumping sequences in the game. Due to all of the spikes around me, I should point out that if I mess this up and die to the spikes, I would have to do the entire section with the totem poles and everything all over again. That's where the last checkpoint was. See, this is why you need to use spikes sparingly. I am totally aware that people like to joke about how all the mad scientists in the Mega Man games never think to just put an impassable spiked wall in Mega Man's path so he can't do anything about it, but it's just frustrating beyond all belief for there to be an instant death trap at the end of a section that's going to send you back quite a ways if you fail at it. That's just over punishing. Anyways, we're up to the battle with Hymax now. I didn't show you the second Hymax encounter because it's optional, but it's basically identical to the third Hymax encounter here in the gate stages, except for the fact that Hymax now has a really annoying shield that you have to blast past in order to damage him. The way Hymax works is that you're supposed to hit him with a charged buster shot and then use any special weapon to do real damage to him. However, he can be goaded into his desperation phase early by destroying the shields enough times, which is what I'm going to do here. Now that he's in his desperation phase, any special weapon can arbitrarily hurt him now. I have no idea why, but it seems the ground dash is the ideal move here because it freezes time temporarily which allows you to get your bearings as you try desperately to avoid the infamous death balls. Yeah, that's what they're called. He says death ball every time he uses one. And you don't want to damage the death balls directly either because then they shoot out even more projectiles that are even harder to avoid. How nice. 
I also feel that they wasted Hymax as a character because he doesn't really do anything after this fight considering he's dead, but he doesn't really do a whole lot in the plot either. He just shows up at the end of the interest stage and then you can fight him one time and they talk about how he's this invincible reploid and stuff, but I don't really know what role he serves in the plot of this game. And I actually like the plot of this game, so that's a bit disappointing. Anyways, the ride is actually not over yet because immediately after Gate Stage 2, you get sent to Gate Stage 3 without any opportunity to change your equipment or armor or anything at all, which is actually going to have a very serious consequence. After getting past the enemies that only the Z-Saber can hurt, which haven't appeared since the intro stage for some reason, the game actually gives you a different level depending on whether you are playing as X or Zero. Zero gets to deal with even more trash compactors from Metal Shark Player's stage, only with even less room to maneuver in, if you can believe it. X, on the other hand, has more rainy turtleoid shenanigans with acid rain and transmitters you have to destroy, and an infamous gap that the patch actually gets rid of, because this gap stopped a lot of players. If you entered this stage with the shadow armor, then the gap would be impassable unless you had the correct parts equipped. And if you came in here with unarmored X, then the gap is just impossible to get past unless you use a glitch involving using the ground dash and the magma blade to reset your vertical velocity so that gravity doesn't pull you into the pit. This oversight is made even worse by the fact that if you exit gate stage 3, then for whatever reason you are actually sent back to gate stage 2 and have to do all of the totem pull stuff and fight climax all over again with a different set of armor just to be able to attempt this stage with different equipment. That is, that is the worst kind of oversight. I have no idea why they made any of these decisions. Anyways, the rest of the level isn't that interesting. It's just more enemy spam and trying to get through this before the rain kills you. And of course, we have more of the rainy turtleoid enemies that are really hard to destroy. Yeah, at this point, just use whatever you've got to get rid of the rest of the transmitters and destroy this final weather control device and you will finally be out of the level and be able to fight Gate himself, who is, uh, well, he's very different from most Mega Man X bosses because you cannot damage him directly. Instead, he will shoot out energy balls that you're meant to destroy, and those will send out bullets that will actually damage Gate if he is hit. But the bullets just fly in very weird directions. They don't go directly above or below where the energy ball was, so being able to destroy it from those positions will keep you safe, and hopefully Gate will be in range of the bullets when they appear. There are several different varieties of energy balls, each with a different color and a different effect if you let it linger on the screen for too long. Green is the easiest to avoid, it just moves towards you, giving you lots of time to destroy it. Purple is awful as it will generate a nightmare enemy, which means you could probably gather souls from it in this fight, if you're playing the patch anyways. In the vanilla version, it definitely doesn't give you any souls. The yellow ball shoots at you, the blue ball pulls you towards it, which is very annoying if you're trying to cling to a wall, as you will constantly be off the wall and back on again at the same time, and the red ball will slow everything down except for Gate's own movements. Now, it goes without saying that there's way too much RNG here, because you're relying on Gate doing a specific move in order to be able to damage him at all, which begs the question of why doesn't he realize that his move is actually causing him to be damaged and stop doing it, but I don't know. I ask that question about just about every video game villain these days. Past Half Health, he has one more trick up his sleeve. He can actually destroy the platforms that you're supposed to be standing on. How nice. Fortunately, it's very easy to avoid, just keep away from him as much as possible. You can lure him into specific positions because he will always move to wherever you were standing when he starts moving. I have absolutely no idea if a game over here would send me all the way back to Gate Stage 2 because game overs in the patch version will not send you to the same checkpoint that the vanilla game would have, but of course I was not willing to find that out for myself and really wanted to defeat him with my last life. And that fall right there gave me a heart attack, I thought the platform would have respawned when I was jumping into it. This game sometimes. Oftentimes when I play this, I wonder if the developers ever thought enough is enough while they were designing it. Like, at one point, do you stop doing all of these things that make the game so much more unfair? I mean, it's obvious that the game was rushed to meet a very strict deadline because it came out very quickly after X5, so it's likely that they couldn't test all of this to make sure that it wasn't super frustrating before the game actually came out. But just some of the ideas they come up with, like, 
making gate stage two and three the same stage so you have to go through all of it with the same equipment and then making a gap that only certain armors would be allowed to pass what was the idea behind all of that they should have realized sooner that there would have been an impossible jump for certain armors without very specific parts Anyways, with Gate finally out of the way, the big reveal comes out that he has also revived Sigma, which is just such a non-reveal at this point. I kind of like that Sigma is not really the big bad guy here, even though he's the final boss, because when he gets revived, he's in such a state of disarray that he could barely be called a fully completed body. Anyways, we'll be facing that next up, so stay tuned.